our first year in Woodruff Park, there was a, a movement with the homeless people. They were trying to move the homeless people out of the park, <laughs> publicly and nationally, because they would broadcast it on the news. So this is our first year in the park, and it was this, I can't remember his name, it was a tall white guy, I just remember, he had like a mink, like, it was a, it was a trench coat, but it had like mink or something on the collar or whatever. Mm -hmm. He was the, the number one activist out there for the home, he wasn't homeless, this man had a mansion in Roswell. He slept out there in the park with him. Here comes the media, right? So, this is our first year. We all over the news. <laughs> Because we hosting this event out there along, and guess who had our back? All of the homeless people. So when our when our show started that day, fire marshal came. You got Channel Two. Everybody was out there, man. Every news media outlet you can think of. Even Mayor Kasim Reed pulled up in the big. Ha, huh, Mr. He Reed pulled up in the in the in the <laughs> Kasim Reed pulled up in the police station on wheels, brother. Oh, wow. They had a whole <laughs> organization in this in this uh, Winnebago, whatever you want to call it, armored and everything. But they got computers and everything on the inside when you walk the inside. I, I know that because we had to go inside there to talk to him that day because they wanted to shut us down hmm. because it was too many people out there. But See, look, check is, it out. This is why it makes it so special, though. No, no, this, this is why. The homeless people had our back. So the power generator we had that the fire marshal was trying to take and cover, nah, they did, all, all of them did, just like this. Oh, wow. Linked up right around the, the power, the generator, because they couldn't touch them. Right. They couldn't touch them. And they couldn't move them out that park. Right, because they ain't did nothing wrong, right. That's what saved our show that first year. After that, they wanted us to keep continue to do it. Wow. And See, that's why we're here, the ninth annual, right now. Yeah, they, they, again, it's, it's more, monumental because I was chasing music. Like I didn't even, I was chasing music. So to sleep in Woodrow Park and to have my luggage there mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get a job at McDonald's, which was across, that's when Five Points had underground mm -hmm. before they shut down mm -hmm. underground. And you was given like a big old meat sample. Right. They had to last you for 12 hours because they give out another meat sample every other 12 hours. I mean, like, I'm old Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So when these young cats say, oh, I'm, I'm on grind for this music, are you willing to lose before you gain? Right. Like, right. I was eating out of dumpsters for music. Right. Like, I was sleeping in Woodrow Park for a year and a half. Wow. Wow. Like, this, this is life. So if, again, I am beyond honored to get any award from any organization, especially Atlanta Hip Hop Day. Mm -hmm. I've been in tears because it means so much to me. We appreciate that. Honestly, man. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I didn't know that background about you. Oh, yes. Now. Chasing music, homeless for three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I wanted to do music. I didn't go to college. I had a college degree. Mm -hmm. Paid for it, but I was like, oh man, they're going to put me on and st uh, stink on the studios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to put me on. Yeah, all they got to do is hit this beat in my laptop. Right. Fruity Loops won. Boom. I was gonna get put on. So tell me about you being a Christian artist. Yes. With autism. I, I put God at first in front of everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm just blessed to be able to speak. Cause I didn't start speaking until I was 13, 13 and a half at a two year old's level. So how a two year old speak, I was speaking at 13, mm -hmm. 13 and a half. So they didn't know if I was ever gonna come out of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and plus I was on Ritalin, Paxo, Depakote, Lithium, Zoloft. 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams per day. Mm -hmm. So um, when I started doing music, music was my girlfriend. Okay. Like they, music didn't judge me. Those instruments didn't say, okay, I don't want to sit by you. I don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So it's because of those instruments I began, began to talk. It's because of my sisters mm -hmm. and my family, I began to use more verbiage. Mm -hmm. And I, I had to praise God by giving him the lyrical content with Jesus. But I'm not one of those, throw your hands up, yeah, shout it, throw your hands up and stuff <laughs> like that. No, nah, I'm more like I was born back in 83, a pain and misery, not searching for empathy, but poverty is over me. And consciously, I can't help what I grew to see. I guess it's society that's the way it's supposed to be. I'm speaking openly about the trials that's chosen me. And hopefully, as I go through this world, it's not cold for me. <laughs> I'm more okay. like that. Okay, I see. I like that. So tell me some of the tell me some of the artists you've worked with. I, I know that you've worked with some major people. 
So that's yes. that's my origin around that question. Ah, uh, shoot. Dwell A, Eric Robeson, Kanye Thoughts, Algebra. Um, you know, I was taught under the under under the great organized noise. Um, Tutelage, um, Shirley Caesar, Little Wayne, um, and the list goes on. Wow. Wow, man. So you you've you've put a hand in in the Christian platform. So well, I'm how, trying to put a hand in the Christian platform. Okay. You know, again, it was a blessing to work with her. Mm. But, you know, in, within everything is politics, rules, and, and you just have to be at the right place at the right time. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so how, how do people embrace you when they, they know they know Marcus Boyd, mm -hmm. uh, um, he's autistic, mm -hmm. um, he's an autistic Christian rapper. So how do they embrace you when they see you? Like, what did, what did they... What did they what type of questions do they ask you? Well, it's more normal until I say, hi, I'm autism activist Marcus Boyd. Mm -hmm. I have autism. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, oh, what? For real? Stop playing. <laughs> no, I'm not playing. I've been having it almost 37 years. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, we, we didn't know. We can't tell. What does, who, what does the face of autism look like? Right. There really is no face. If I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about cerebral palsy, Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's worse cases of autism. Mm -hmm. There's autism spectrums and classical autism and stuff of that nature. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, I was, I was slobbing on myself. I was using the bathroom on myself. I was doing everything. I was having emotional problems. At, at 30, almost 37, I still have emotional problems. I still don't like loud noises, mm -hmm. even though I'm a music producer. Mm -hmm. I still don't like certain colors. Mm -hmm. I still don't like being around certain people. Mm -hmm. I still have, a, you know, those type of situations right. at almost 40. Mm -hmm. So it's not like this is a disease or some type of STD where you take certain medication or you get a certain shot or mm -hmm. you do a certain thing and it's over. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to have this for the rest of your life and it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not a curse. It's not a disease. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And if people understand that autism, people lives matter. They are important. They are gifts and their voices and their opinions and their dreams matter just like everybody else cuz we just like everybody mm -hmm. else. Yeah. I've known uh, personally two autistic people in my life. One of them was one of the smartest people I've ever met, and he and he was a kid. And they wrote a book behind him and shot a movie from. You remember, uh, what was it Life of a Wimpy Kid? Yes, um, yes. I, said, yes, I, said I read an the book. Kid I read the and book. Ryan, that they that they wrote that and did that that film after. So I see exactly what you're saying. I mean, I, I my own I became an activist is because to help spread more awareness, to grow their awareness, so people can really understand that there are some incredible lawyers, judges, NASCAR racers, basket professional basketball players, baseball players, mm -hmm. all these actors, all these people have autism, mm -hmm. and and they are making incredible strides, mm -hmm. and they need to understand that it's not some type of. Um, this, not some type of disorder to where you feel like you can't do nothing. Mm -hmm. You need to, if your child has autism, if you're an adult or a teenager, whoever, you need to keep pushing them, mm -hmm. keep selling them, mm -hmm. keep pulling them and pushing them into greatness. Mm -hmm. Don't be like, oh, they can't do it. They have a little problems or they're struggling. No, mm -hmm. keep pushing them because you could be pushing the next lawyer, the president, sure. next doctor, surgeon. You would, you would never know. My, my family didn't know that they was pushing the next music producer, mm -hmm. the next songwriter. They didn't know this because mm -hmm. they didn't even know if I was ever going to talk. Right. I heard that. So where are you originally from? I was born in Atlanta. Not Grady. I'm just playing. <laughs> 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 Ain't nothing wrong with Grady. Ain't nothing wrong with Grady. I was just born at Crawford Long Hospital, mm -hmm. raised between Atlanta and Brooklyn, New York. I was in the foster care system basically until I aged out. Okay. And um, so, you're a, so you're a foster? Foster yes. how, how was that experience for you? Do you? Uh, I got in foster care in the '87. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my my social worker, Dusty Carr, God rest her soul, she's worked at the cab um, defects over there by Avondale train mm -hmm. station, and you know, she used to take me to her house. That was before the HIPAA law confidentiality. Right. So I was at her house with her three kids, okay. and she treated me just like them. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the adoption line. You remember, yeah. different world, yeah. adoption lines. Right. So I had to clip on ties, people just spin me around, mm -hmm. hold on my arms, stuff like that, touch my face, mm -hmm. to see if they wanted to put me in their family. Mm -hmm. I ain't never got picked, <laughs> but, because I was short and chubby. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but, 
I've had some experience <laughs> in the adoption world, though. My, my, uh, my little brother is actually my cousin, but we, we, our family adopted him legally. But it's not just like my parents, ad- we all adopted him. We all went through the same process when I was this tall that you would have to go through as an, an adult. So I definitely understand and that. That's, and that's remarkable. Because it shows, it shows families not just not just of, of a color of, of African American. Mm-hmm. It shows that a family unit when they come together, mm-hmm. what mountains move. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, who most influences you musically? Uh, uh, I just shout out to King Roscoe, man. That's that's, that's <laughs> yeah, Roscoe. That's, dope. That's, that's, he's dope. But um, uh, I just told him that I listen to Key Glock. I mm-hmm. listen to Key Glock every morning. Um, <laughs> But I'm more of a jazz guy, Dwelle, Egg, Egg Robeson, Music Soul Child, Jill Scott, um, Knife Wonder, Crisis on the Board, DJ Premier, Pete mm, Rock. Mm, um, mm. You know, I'm, I'm old school mm. because it, it's a difference in Atlanta. They just think that we all trapped out and crunk and that way and stuff of that nature. Yeah. And instead of using the elements mm. of freestyling, because I'm a beast. Okay. I'm a beast. Because okay. see what I spit, before was written. Mm. But if I say I take your white socks hat, go ahead and understand it with the jersey be a perfect match. You never really seen this until the syllables become attached. These these type of flows you really never heard. Cause yeah. I'ma mix pronouns, switch to with every verb. I'ma go ahead and say that my thoughts was absurd and show you the new foundation. Cause I was just saying that my communication gonna be stronger than any found in me foundation. Was searching for the revelation until I really got the communication. So, you know, you get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, on the spot. I love that. I love that. And that's that's part of what we're about. MCing, well, mostly. MCing. I bring, if we talk about elements, I bring yeah. MC and DJing mm. because I am a DJ. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. DJ Marcus. <laughs> so, right. um, that's what I bring to the table. And I'm trying to learn the b boying the graffiti. Mm. Because it's not just b-boying, dancing. Mm. It's, you can be a b-boy and really don't dance. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can be a graffiti artist and don't spray on walls. Yeah. You can spray on shirts, or mm-hmm. you can spray on anything mm-hmm. to express your art, mm-hmm. art shit. And that's what a lot of them evolved to anyways, doing stuff like that. Um, so what, what can we expect from you in the next few years? What, oh. what, what would you want the world to look out for? Um, a, a silent music, I mean, um, Let's see, a silent music note, the Marcus Boyd story, the book, we're gonna start on that next year. Okay. And then we're gonna be working on the docu-series and stuff of that nature, more traveling, more talking about, um, you know, my autism. And God forgive me, look, be looking out for the new single from Courtney Atia. It's called Crush On You. It's everywhere, it's gonna be in every platform, every market. Courtney Atia, she's a Incredible singer, oh, okay. incredible singer, wow. Muddy Peach Entertainment. Um, it's just more stuff is coming, and I am grateful to Atlanta Hip Hop Day for even giving me the Pioneer Award and letting my letting my trap beats be seen on the October 6th so these guys can freestyle oh, yeah. We're and gonna battle. Use them. We're definitely going to use them. We're definitely going to use them. Um, all right, well, let everybody know where to find you, social media, find um, your music, everything. Yeah, you can find me over there at um, JJ Rib Shack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> old Atlanta, but nah, um, autism activist Marcus Boyd on Instagram, um, Marcus Boyd on Facebook, um, or just reach out to anybody that knows Marcus Boyd. And again, my last thought is whether you have autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, or whether you're a regular individual, do not let somebody else tell you no. Create your own yes. Do not wait for opportunity to happen. Create your own. Make sure that you understand that your faith is your destiny. Don't just have faith of a mustard seed. Surpass the mustard seed and keep going. In regardless of your age, your range, your financial status, or whatever. If Abraham can have a child at 100 years old, what do you think God can do for you? Amen. Well, we appreciate you coming out, man. Appreciate you. Thanks from Atlanta Hip Hop Day. Always. And we'll see you soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.